my wife had an affair with her co-worker on June 1, 2022. I'm in desperate need of help and advice. I, 28M, found out that my wife, 28F, had an affair with her former supervisor, 35M, at work, who's married with kids. We've been married for five years and were high school sweethearts, we were each other's first relationship and first everything. When we were little kids, we were even neighbors. She has always been there. We both came from broken homes, but we always had each other, and we created something different than what we grew up seeing, or at least that's what I thought. Maybe I was just one big idiot the entire time. I still work remotely, while my wife has since gone back to being in person. There aren't many women in her field, and she used to vent to me a lot that her job was more in line with a boys club. Her AP, who was still her supervisor at the time, was one of the good ones, supposedly, and looked out for my wife at work. Recently, my wife received a promotion, and I was so happy for her, she was now a supervisor herself. This brought some new responsibilities, such as having to take a few business trips during the year. Her first trip happened last week, Wednesday through Friday. Before she left, I told her that I'd be rooting for her from home, and she told me that she'd be leaving her heart with me and to take care of it, that's something she always says to me whenever we have to be apart. On Monday, she came home from work early, and I could immediately tell that something was wrong. She looked overwhelmed, and there was a red mark on her right cheek. My wife is pale and tends to bruise easily. I asked her what happened, but she only asked me to hug her, she said she just wanted to feel my embrace. I hugged her, and after a few moments, she proceeded to say there was an incident at work. She sat me down on the couch and made the confession that has destroyed me and completely uprooted my life, she had sex with her former supervisor on the team lead trip. I couldn't even process it at first, it was like I was watching it happen to someone else or like she was going to reveal it was a cruel joke. I think I would have accepted the cruel joke over reality. I was quiet during her whole confession, not saying one word. I was just in shock. Cheating is a sensitive topic for me, as it is for a lot of people. My own family was wrecked by an affair my dad had, I'm the one who caught him cheating and told my mom. My dad and I's relationship is not good at all because he blames me for ruining the family, and he has never forgiven me. My wife saw what cheating did to my family and knew how much it tore me apart. Heck, she's seen me cry over this back when we were teens, and she comforted me. And then she turns around and does this to me. To us? Apparently, the man's own wife found out and confronted her husband and my wife at work. It was a big scene, with employees and customers all present. The woman had called my wife white trash and slapped her. After the slap, other employees started interfering, and the woman was escorted out of the building. My wife then called her older sister, 30F. In her words, she said her sister scolded her and told her that she needed to tell me about the affair and that I needed to hear it from her. I still never said a word, and she asked me to please say something. The only thing I could muster up to say in the moment was that I needed her to tell me what happened on the trip. She said on the second day of the trip, she went out for drinks with the other team leads and that the group stayed out late, and she felt like she needed to participate in a team bonding experience. Throughout the night, each team leader wandered off until only she and her former supervisor left, and they went back to his room to listen to music. He kept complimenting her and telling her how sexy she was and that if he were me, he wouldn't be able to keep his hands off her. He eventually kissed her. My wife told me she doesn't know what came over her and that she wasn't thinking clearly, but she let him keep kissing her, which then turned to him groping her. They progressed to having sex. I didn't want any more details because I couldn't take it, and I got up off the couch, telling her to stop. She reached out to take my hand, but I moved away and told her not to touch me. She broke down crying and started profusely apologizing and begging for forgiveness, saying how it was the biggest mistake of her life, that she hates herself, and that she wishes she could take it back. She kept repeating how much she loved me and only me. That the alcohol clouded her judgment. I told her she needed to leave, she needed to call her sister to pick her up. She got up from the couch, crying even more, and tried to hug me, but I moved away again. She begged me not to do this, saying all kinds of stuff like she would quit her job, give me full access to her phone, and say we do counseling. I couldn't keep it together. I told her if she wasn't going to leave the house, then I would. I didn't even stop to pack a bag or anything, but just went for the door. 
She grabbed my arm, I guess, to try to stop me from leaving, and kept pleading for me not to do this, saying after everything we've been through that this can't be the end of us. Despite everything, seeing her in that state and leaving her behind while she was crying still tore me apart because I love her. I love her more than I ever thought it was possible to love someone else. But she broke me. She tossed our entire lives and futures away, I ended up going to my mom's house, and that's currently where I'm staying. I don't know how I kept my senses during the drive, but when I arrived, I just cried. I don't even think my mom has ever seen me cry as a teen or an adult. The only person who's ever seen me cry is my wife. I did tell my mom what happened because I honestly didn't know how to keep it from her with me showing up at her place in that way. She was brokenhearted over it, she and my wife always got along. My mom treated her like a daughter, that was their relationship. She didn't pass any judgment but said I could stay as long as I needed and tried to offer some words of comfort. Ever since I left, my wife has been blowing up my phone with calls and texts, but I haven't answered or written back. The texts have basically just been begging me to come home and to talk with her, asking where I am, and to please not give up on us. I just feel so broken. I thought I knew what this pain was like, but it's nothing compared to experiencing it yourself. I never thought my wife would do something like this. I always had the belief that there was no coming back from cheating for me, that the relationship would be over, but now I keep thinking if I should give our relationship another chance, go to counseling together, and try to salvage the relationship. I keep thinking back to all the history we have, how much I love her, how we always felt like matching puzzle pieces, and how when I thought I had no one, she was there. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to proceed. I'm at a loss. Update. My wife had an affair with her co-worker on June 4, 2022. Thanks to everyone for the advice, concern, and resources. With everything going on, I haven't been able to respond to every comment or message, but they've been very much appreciated. This week has been the most excruciating. I feel like a helpless kid again who can only watch as the world around me falls apart. And I'm going through it without my wife, who has been my best friend and supporter. I was certain I didn't have the whole story. So yesterday, I looked into contacting OBS. I knew I needed to hear what she had to say in order for me to get some clarity, she wouldn't have any agenda to lie or withhold whatever information she had from me. I found her Facebook account and wrote to her on Messenger. She responded no more than 10 minutes later and offered to video call right then. I immediately replied that I was available. One look without a word, and I could tell she was going through a similar hell as me. She said that shortly after being escorted out of the workplace last Monday, she actually tried to get in contact with me but couldn't find my details, in fact, one of the last things she said to my wife was threatening that she was going to tell me. When she was saying this, all I could think of was how my wife rushed home that day and how her sister told her that I needed to hear about the affair from her. I asked her if she knew more about what occurred during the team lead trip, if this was really just an ONS, and how she found out. What she told me confirmed my fears, the affair dates back to before the trip, documented proof from texts that were of an intense emotional affair. All of this, OBS shared with me via screen share, and I could barely keep it together. She told me that back in January, she noticed that her husband was withdrawn and disinterested in her. There were times she saw him texting my wife, but he would brush it off as work-related conversations. The day before the trip, she went to the job to drop something off her so had forgotten, and she found myself in his office with my wife, standing close together, joking and smiling. She said the whole atmosphere between them felt flirty. When they noticed her, they parted, and my wife's face looked panicked while her husband went over it all together. She said it was then that she felt certain there was something going on between her husband and my wife, but she didn't address it because she wanted undeniable proof her husband couldn't escape from. After the trip, her so was more distant and dismissive. That night, she waited until he fell asleep and then checked his phone. She went to his text thread with my wife, where everything was there to see, intimate texts back and forth before the trip, it started as emotional cheating, others were of AP, saying that it was impossible for him to focus at work whenever my wife was around. In these texts, it was clear that AP was the pursuer slash aggressor toward my wife, but that doesn't really make a difference because she never shut down his advances. Some of the pre-trip texts were AP bashing his wife and going off about repeated miscarriages. It was just plain disgusting with how he talked about her to my wife, he kept mentioning how maybe he needed a woman like my wife. 
There were texts from last Thursday night with AP inviting my wife to join the team for drinks, and texts AP sent to my wife the following morning that clearly revealed that they had sex. At this point, there were no more replies from my wife after Thursday night. I didn't think it was possible for me to hurt any worse, but here I am. OSB said it took her everything to remain calm, as she didn't want to alert her twin sleeping in the other room, but she didn't wake her husband up or confront him immediately. She said that in her heart she was done with him, and that for her, he had crossed a line he couldn't come back from. She said she was more angry than she'd ever been during their marriage, and that through her anger, she was set on humiliating him like he had humiliated her. So she faked her smiles, acted like everything was fine, and waited until Monday, when she was going to out him at work in front of his peers, underlings, and customers. She said this confrontation had been brewing for a while now. Apparently, it was only a coincidence that my wife was at work that day as well. When OSB saw my wife with AP and another employee, she decided to target my wife, too. When she went on to call out my wife, my wife tried unsuccessfully to get her to quiet down. OBS then started saying her husband had no signs of remorse in the slightest, but only anger at her public outburst. I learned from her that AP was fired the following day after the confrontation. She also kicked him out of the house and said one of the hardest things in her life was having to explain this all to her twins. I had an idea of what she meant because I saw my own mom have to do the same thing after my dad. She said that this whole ordeal showed her who her husband really was, and while her husband pursued my wife, nonetheless, my wife still had a part in the affair, and that as a woman, she had no sympathy or respect for my wife whatsoever. I told her I in no way faulted her for that and that she had every right. She actually apologized to me for her husband's role in the affair. I literally was at a loss for words for a moment, and then I apologized for the part my wife played, and she said that her and I are now a part of a club we never wanted to be in, a club that our SOs forced us into. She asked me about my wife and me. I told her that I honestly didn't know what I was going to do but that I wasn't currently staying with my wife. She wished me all the best, and I did the same to her. Before ending the call, we exchanged numbers, so if we ever wanted to talk again, every raw emotion was only heightened. I confided in my mom about what I learned, and she still didn't voice any judgment, but I could tell that she's upset with my wife. A part of me feels great happiness that AP is losing everything, his job and his family, and that maybe he's out there suffering as well. But I'm not proud of that feeling, at the same time, I feel immense guilt over that because a wife is losing her husband, and children are losing their family as they know it. Those kids are in for a whole world of pain. I feel anger also towards my wife for doing this to us, for breaking our vows, and for putting my health in jeopardy, we did have sex after she returned from the trip, and the post-trip texts hint that protection wasn't used. I do know I should resume contact with my wife regarding the information OBS has provided me with and demand a timeline. But at the same time, I feel even more lost than I was when I made the original post. I feel like I'm just drowning here. I broke no contact with my wife, who had an affair with her co-worker on June 7, 2022. I want to start this off by thanking everyone for their advice, kind words, and support. Everything is appreciated. Admittedly, there's been some comments and messages that are hard to see, but they're nevertheless needed, and I feel like they're coming from a good place. One week has passed since D-Day. After talking with OBS, I've been trying to process everything. I haven't been sleeping well. To know that my wife, who I've known since we were 5 years old and started dating at 13, who had been my best friend slash confidant, had an affair. I feel like an empty shell. When I step outside, I feel like people know, and they're secretly laughing at me. Has anyone else felt that way? I decided to break NC to request a timeline. The plan was to go Sunday without warning, and if I'm being honest, I wanted to give her another chance to be truthful and to see how she'd been living. Some mentioned that AP could be at our home. It was painful to consider that she could be defiling the home we shared together for most of our adult lives, but after everything, it wasn't far-fetched. I texted OBS for a description of AP's car and why I needed it, she sent the info. I made the drive back and looked out for AP's car, but it wasn't around. I went into the house to find my WW by herself on the couch. She was stunned to see me, her eyes were red and a little puffy, like she'd been crying. I hated seeing her this way, and I had this urge to comfort her. But then I recalled how we got here in the first place. 
It was almost confusing, not acting to help her. My WW called my name with a sense of relief and moved toward me, but I asked her to stop, she did, then said that she'd been worried about me and thanked me for coming back home. I asked if AP had been in the house, and she said no. But I searched the house, and she followed after while promising that he was never here. I didn't find anything that suggested AP was. I asked if she had any contact with him, she admitted he left a voicemail, but she didn't call back and blocked his number. She showed proof of this. We sat at the dining room table to talk. At this point, I tried not to get lost in emotion. I told her I would like for her to answer my questions, she agreed to do so, saying that she's just glad I'm here and that we're talking again. I asked her if she had quit, and she said she hadn't yet, but on the same day AP was fired, she was suspended for a week pending an investigation, tomorrow she'll learn the outcome. She said AP's firing was the sole reason she hadn't quit like she offered. I asked her to tell me about the affair. She said she already did, but I told her that we both know there's more to the story, and now I'm giving her another chance to be honest with me, and if I were to discover any lies, then there would be no going back. She was quiet for a few moments, and then she nodded. She revealed the extent of the affair, and it matched with what OBS showed me, the affair started emotionally, and there had been some flirting at work, but she insisted they only had sex once. She didn't go into every single detail that OBS showed, but she revealed the EA. She didn't say anything I didn't already know, but it was like a fresh wound opened up after hearing her confirm it. I was left in silence again, like I was on D-Day, she asked me to please tell her what I was thinking. I asked her why she would do this. She knew or saw my family's history firsthand, but still did this, was she unhappy in any way? At this, she broke down crying and said she has never been unhappy with me or our marriage, that she loves me, and that our relationship is the most important thing to her. I said her actions speak louder. She said she doesn't know why she got involved in the affair, but she never wanted to hurt me, and it kills her, that by the time they had sex, she made so many mistakes and realized she was in too deep and didn't know how to pull herself out, especially when AP had championed for her at work. She told me that the affair was no failure on my part and that it's all on her. I asked if she felt forced by AP, to which she said that everyone loved him and that, as far as I know, there was a boys club mentality. She said that she froze up during sex. She just kept saying sorry, and if she could take it all back, she would. My emotions were slipping, so I tried to speed it along and asked why she would have sex with me, which she initiated, she only said that she felt so disgusting and guilty that she wanted to wash it away by being with me again. I told her she didn't wash anything away, all she did was endanger me to ease her conscience. She didn't have a response, she only kept crying. I then asked her if she ever planned to tell me, she said she wanted to confess and was afraid because she knew how cheating was a deal breaker for me, she thought she could fix it by stopping the affair and not communicating with AP outside of work, and she said she stopped texting him after they had sex. I asked her if AP wore a condom, and she revealed sex wasn't planned and that because she froze up, she didn't mention it to AP. She said that she'll never forgive herself, that I have every right to hate her, and that seeing the pain she caused me and being without me with NC has extremely scared her. She pleaded with me to give our marriage another chance, but I compared her to my dad, and that remark stung deep. She said she was nothing like him, but I asked, where's the difference? She tried to take my hand, but I moved my hands out of the way. She said that we're not my parents, and it's different for us, and to please tell her that we can make it over this after everything we've been through. I couldn't tell you that. I then made my timeline request, it seemed to terrify her, but I insisted, and she agreed. I told her that we needed to get tested, she agreed without an issue. I was barely keeping my emotions in order, so I went to pack a bag and some essentials. She begged me to stay, saying that she'd stay on the couch, but she just wanted me to be home, I said that I couldn't stay here with her. When I was leaving, she said she loves me so much and that she's sorry for everything. I didn't say anything in return, I couldn't. She then asked where I was staying, and I admitted that I was with my mom, she asked if I could tell my mom something but said I couldn't be her go-between. I know she's also worried about her relationship with my mom, as I said before, she treated her like a daughter. WW never really had her mom in her life, there was neglect. She asked if she could hug me, but I said no and left. Now, 
I'm just looking at my options. She told more of the truth this time, but reality is still reality. I don't know what to make of her statement that she froze up. I also don't know if I'm ready to tell other people about the affair because I feel so embarrassed. Anyway, right now I'm trying to take it day by day and would greatly appreciate any advice on how to proceed from here. I received the timeline from my wife of her affair with her co-worker on June 9, 2022. Hi, everyone. Thanks for the continued support. Here's an update on the situation. I've been keeping light contact with my WW, she texted that she was going in for the post-suspension meeting. An hour later, she said she was fired. We discussed the STD tests. We'll be going on Thursday. Last night, she FaceTimed me, I was hesitant to answer. She still looked the same as Sunday. She said she had finished the timeline, and I told her I'd be coming over tomorrow. She said that writing the timeline was one of the hardest things she has done, only second to our current separation. She was trying not to cry. Usually, I'd comfort her, but I couldn't. My mom offered to come with me for support, she said she wouldn't go into the house, but she'd wait in the car. I think she was worried about me driving back. I accepted her offer, and I drove us. My WW was waiting for me inside with a two-page document. She was anxious. I sat by her on the couch, it was like day again. I wanted her to read the timeline. She was thrown by this, the fear was clear on her face. Her and I were always so attuned, and her fear heightened my dread. I said I needed her to do this for me, and after a moment, she did. It was crushing on day, it was crushing when I talked to OBS, it was crushing when WW admitted the EA, and it was still crushing. The timeline covered everything from WW being hired to day one, how her and AP's friendship began, the culture at work, and how AP presented himself as different. While he joked with the guys, he didn't go along with the nonsense and kept his department intact. He started looking out for her and went out of his way to get her seen or credited. A friendship was established. AP started venting about his home life, and she was a listening ear to him. He would ask about hers, he seemed to be probing. She told him about her mom's relapsing. He grew bolder in venting, she wished she'd spoken up but was blinded by her view of AP as one of the good ones. At work, co-workers mocked her for being AP's favorite, etc. She didn't confide in me about this because at the time I was getting into it with my dad, she felt like her problems were petty in comparison, so she didn't want to throw it on me. She vented to AP, this started the EA, and now AP was being told about issues that I wasn't. This hurt to hear because we always kept an open line of communication with each other, there wasn't anything we couldn't talk about. No matter what I had going on, she was my first priority, and I would have been there for her, we were a team. AP started flirting at work or on texts, and she started flirting back. He told her that a promotion was coming up, and he wanted to make sure that she was a contender as she was one of the best employees. After the promotion, he hugged her, that was their first physical contact, and he joked that she could thank him some other time. When the team went out for drinks, they broke off to their own tables, and he vented about OBS and his kids. They went to his room under the pretense of listening to music and taking the party upstairs to celebrate her promotion. He turned on music and talked about the view from his room. He pulled her to him and started dancing a bit, he kept saying how sexy she is and that if he were me, he wouldn't be able to keep his hands off of her. He eventually kissed her, and she froze up, her mind shut down. Her mind and emotions weren't there. AP started groping her all over, and it went to sex, she didn't orgasm, and AP finished quickly. He told her, that was a hell of a celebration. He eventually fell asleep. She quietly got out of bed and left for her room. She immediately went into the shower and repeatedly scrubbed her body, but she still felt filthy. She didn't sleep that night and just cried as she thought of me. The next morning, there was only one meeting, but she didn't go. AP called and said he was disappointed he missed out on a second go in the morning. She was barely replying, and he asked if something was wrong, but she lied and said that she was hungover. He told her that he'd cover for her at the meeting. He tossed away the idea of them staying behind another day. She was afraid to tell me about what happened because she knew how cheating was a deal-breaker for me. She made a plan to stop the affair by not communicating with AP beyond work. She came home early, even more wrecked with guilt as we reunited, 
but she acted like nothing was wrong. On Saturday morning, she initiated sex in an attempt to wash away what she did, but she only felt worse since she'd been with AP without a condom. On Monday, AP pulled her aside, and she told him that they should leave what happened in the past and that it was a mistake, but AP was refuting until another employee approached. After the confrontation, she called her sister in a state of panic. My sister found out the same day I did. There's more to the timeline, but I summed it up. While reading, she cried and took short breaks to catch her breath. I wasn't holding up much either. She touched my hand as she repeatedly apologized, but I removed my hand from under hers. I had to get out of there, so I asked for the timeline and left. Inside my car, I broke down, and my mom, without saying a word, embraced me. I sat there crying in her arms like I was a little kid again. I was in no condition to drive, so she drove us back. My WW kept calling, texting, and blowing up my mom's phone, but I told my mom that I would handle it. I eventually called back, she asked if I was okay, but I said why in the world would I be okay? She apologized and said I was right, she was no better than my dad. She said doing the timeline was like confronting herself, it gave her clarity. She said she loves me and has only ever loved me. Before we got together, we were friends who became best friends, and every moment with me she treasures. She said she hates herself for every choice she's made at the job and that she knows nothing she's going through compares to what I slash OBS and kids are. She said nothing she's lost means anything compared to losing me, she asked if I could find it within me to reconcile, and she'll spend forever trying to show me what our relationship means to her and do the work to make things right again. I couldn't respond, and my right hand was literally shaking. I only said that I needed some space. Do I regret hearing the timeline? Not really, because I needed to have it. Sometimes a decision can be hard for me, something I pick apart, but once I make one, I do my best to stick to it, that's kind of always been my way. I have always loved my WW, we have been through a lot together, and I don't want to lose our relationship, but I still look at what's happened and I'm just broken. I do think IC would go well. I did IC for a year after my dad's affair. I also still want to go the polygraph route as well. I know I need to have my WW take a pregnancy test, too, she's on birth control, but still, I would appreciate any thoughts and advice on this whole situation. I discovered some more information after my wife's timeline of her affair with her co-worker, June 12, 2022. Hi, everyone. First off, thanks to everyone who reached out and provided advice or support, everything is appreciated. Here's an update. Since my WW read her timeline, there hasn't been a moment, it hasn't been heavily weighing on me, and I still haven't slept well. I've read the timeline at least once every day, and with every reread, I experience a variety of emotions, sadness, hurt, anger, and embarrassment. Sometimes I can't even put how I'm feeling into words. I don't think that she was lying or doctoring it up, everything does match with what OBS showed me. I think the timeline was impactful for her. The affair is the affair, but I do believe that AP preyed on her. I'm angry, I was unaware of it and didn't protect her. When we were 17, there was this bad incident with her mom, and she came over to my house, and I held her in my arms, and I promised I would always protect her no matter what. And I feel like I failed with AP. I didn't see his motives. I only took her word. On Friday night, I texted OBS to see if we could talk. I wanted her input and to see how she and the twins were doing. She called, she had just put her kids to bed, and she said how rough it's been on the kids and that she's just been trying to focus on them. She said that it's going to be a bitter divorce, AP's acting like the wronged party and puffing himself up. He hasn't apologized or anything. He's living an extended stay. She changed the locks, so he couldn't come and go. I asked about AP's history, past cheating or abuse of power. She knew where I was going. She has suspicions of past infidelities over the years that a woman always knew, but she never had proof he couldn't deny, she believes he grew overconfident or sloppy with me. There was one allegation five years ago at AP's previous job, a co-worker reported him to HR for retaliating against her after she refused an advance, but nothing came of it. She was viewed as a difficult employee who was frequently late and dismissed as bitter after AP wrote her up. OBS, she ignored the warning signs because she was pregnant. There wasn't another allegation, and he had a great reputation. 
the information took me a minute to process. I did ask if AP gave her a timeline, she said she didn't care for one because she just wants a divorce. She asked if I had made a decision yet with my WW, and I told her that I hadn't, she suggested her attorney when I was ready or just for a consultation. I took the information and thanked her. We talked for a little bit about life post day before hanging up. I felt more anger toward AP. I do believe he set his sights on WW, but she still had an EA that only grew, and I just feel so deeply hurt, lost, and betrayed. I really hate all of this. Yesterday, I still couldn't get what OBS said off my mind. My SAL called me, and the tone of her voice was troubling. She was worried about my WW, she didn't believe she was doing well and had not been eating. She asked if I had talked to her at all, but I hadn't since Thursday, so far, my WW has been respecting me, asking for some space. This did not please me to hear in the slightest, I hated the idea of my WW being in this way, and every day with NC or not seeing her has been extremely hard for me. She asked if I could try talking with her, but she didn't have to because I had already decided on going to see her. On the way over, I stopped at this local restaurant, which my WW loves, and ordered her usual meal to go, and then I went straight to our home without prior warning. Admittedly, a part of me wondered if I might find AP there this time around, but again, his car wasn't around. I entered the house, and my wife was lying on the couch, the TV was on, but she wasn't watching it. She looked like she was going through hell. Conflicting emotions hit me, one, some choices of hers brought this on, and two, I wanted to comfort her and promise her that everything would be okay. She sat up, surprised to see me. She moved to get up, I assume, to hug me, but she stopped herself. I showed her the food and told her that I needed her to eat something, this caught her off guard, and she said that I didn't have to do this, but I said I wanted to. I helped her get settled at the table, got her something to drink, and she started eating her meal. I asked if she heard from AP or if he'd been to the house, and she said no, I asked if I could see her phone. Without any hesitation, she handed it over to me. While she ate, I spent some time searching her phone, there weren't any new conversations with AP, and his number was still blocked. I waited until she was finished eating before I said anything that could distract her, I mentioned that her sister had called, and this threw her off. She promised that she didn't ask her to do that, and she's been trying to respect my space request, but I said that it was okay and that I wasn't bothered by the call. She said I shouldn't have to rush home to take care of her, but I said our vows say otherwise, and they still matter to me. She starts tearing up and says that she ruined us, that she ruined me, and that our relationship was the very best part of her life and meant everything to her. She said that she's angry with herself and disappointed in herself, that I only ever loved and trusted her, but she hurt and betrayed me in a way that would tear me apart the most, and that she'll never forgive herself. At this point, I don't know what happened, but her words had hit me deeply, and I just broke down. She kept saying that she didn't deserve me, and she just kept tearing herself to shreds. The last thing she said was that I must regret being with her. For the first time since day, I cut in and said that my whole life has been wrecked, but she knew that I don't regret her. I listed how many times she saved me and that I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for her. I reminded her about the day we first met at the neighborhood playground when we were five, or how at thirteen I admitted my feelings for her, and the entire time I was nervously stumbling over my words, and she held my hand to reassure me, even then I knew I wanted to be by her side. When I proposed and she said yes, I was beyond excited for us to start our lives together in that way. I never wanted to part with her, she was it for me, and that never once changed before day. We just cried without saying another word. I tried to gather myself, then told her that I needed to go. As I was leaving, she thanked me for coming over, then said that she understands my need for space and that she'll accept whatever consequences come her way but that she's not giving up on us and that she's going to start looking into IC. I only nodded. I have my first IC scheduled for Monday. But I feel like I'm nowhere closer to knowing how to proceed, nor do I feel any less lost. Every emotion you could possibly imagine is just wrecking me, and I feel like I'm trapped in a maze. I would appreciate any advice. My wife had an affair with her co-worker on June 13, 2022. Hi, everyone. This is my first time posting here. I was told that this sub could be good for me with my ongoing situation. I have five posts detailing my ordeal, 
and I'll be providing links to those at the end of this post for better context. But here's a brief overall summary right arrow. I, 28M, found out that my WW, 28F, had an EA that turned into a PA with her co-worker, 35M, AP's married himself with twins. Day for me is officially three weeks ago. The affair came out after AP's STBXW confronted him and my WW at work, which caused a big scene in front of other employees and customers. She and I have been married for five years, but we've been together for 15 years in total, we met when we were five years old, remained neighbors growing up, and started dating at 13. We've been together ever since, we were each other's first relationship and first everything. We both came from broken homes, my own family was wrecked by an affair my dad had, and I'm the one who caught him cheating and told my mom. My relationship with my dad is not good at all because he blames me for ruining the family and has never forgiven me. My WW's broken home consisted of her alcoholic mom and neglect. But we always had each other, and we strive to create something different than what we grew up seeing. My WW has profusely apologized, has given me a detailed timeline, and has asked me if I could find it in myself to reconcile. Ever since day, I've just been broken, and I feel like I'm drowning. I left our home, and I've been staying with my mom. I went from having NC with my WW to light contact. I haven't been doing well. Apparently, it's been the same way for my WW. My WW has said that she understands my need for space and that she'll accept whatever consequences come her way, but that she's not giving up on us and that she's going to start looking into IC. I actually had my first IC today. This is all one summary, so I do hope you're able to read my five previous posts for the whole story. I always said cheating would be a deal breaker for me, but I don't know anything anymore regarding all of this. I hate feeling so helpless again. I'm here today to ask the community, what has reconciliation looked like for you? What has it entailed? Would it display a lack of boundaries if reconciliation was offered after it was already stated that cheating was a deal breaker? Could any boundaries be taken seriously after that? I would appreciate not just answers to these questions but any input, advice, and perspectives.